What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna install these hot racing aluminum threaded telescope shocks with Axial SCX24. So if you've been following along with the channel, you do know now that I do have a new Ultra 4 chassis um, on the new C10 build. So uh, in the last video, I kind of talked about how there isn't much flex anymore because the chassis sits so low on the axles and everything. So I figured we can get these telescope shocks and make that travel on the shock a little bit more. Probably won't be beneficial um, to overall hill climbing, but it'll look cool. So that's what we're gonna do. So I picked up these hot racing shocks over at my local hobby store. Um, they were not cheap. They were $38.88. So these shocks cost more than that whole chassis in itself. So that's definitely something to think about. But um, my job here is to kind of try out all the different parts for you guys to keep you guys entertained. So let's get into these shocks and install them onto the chassis. So here are the shocks. Uh, these are telescoping shocks. So that means that um, the little the little barrel, I guess, in there, it kind of expands like a telescope would, if you can picture that in your head. And so these shocks, um, I want to say they're pretty similar to the kinetic double barrel. Those are really popular early on with the SCX 24s. If you wanted a pair of those, uh, you should have gone on that train early because I can't find a pair anymore. But uh, it doesn't matter because we got these here. So these are pretty big. These are probably at least maybe like a third, maybe half longer than uh, the normal stock shock. So these are gonna provide some extra travel uh, when you're out on the trails. And so provided there are two more different spring rates if you'd like. They're all kind of interconnected with each other. They're always like this, gotta be very delicate. There's one, so this is like kind of like the gold color. Squeeze that, let's see. And then there's kind of this silver color. And I can never, I can never really tell which one's stiffer in my hand. This one definitely seems a lot softer, this gold one. This one would be kind of cool to match with all the brass parts, but I'm not too lazy to do that right now. So we're just gonna run the black ones that come on the shocks. And so, with my, uh, my T-tool that came with my RC4 drive stamp steel bead locks. We're gonna take off a nut, the wheel, pop it off, and then with the wear 1.3, we're gonna take off a shock. So it screws right in to the chassis because that's how it's designed. And there's a point down here on the axle. I'm gonna undo that. And there is the stock shock. And so this is a lot smaller, as you can see, compared to uh, the new Hot Racing Telescope shock. So on here I have um, some spacers, and I kind of put some grease in these back in the day when I first got them. I've never really upgraded the shocks on a C10, really. So, uh, I mean, it's definitely possible to just use these and run them all the time. You don't need to upgrade them. And so here is a new shock. And so provided is eight screws, eight hardware screws, two for each corner. Pretty delicate, I'm gonna lose them. And we're gonna just drop them like I just did. There's eight screws. And in a previous video, what video was it? A couple videos back, I forget what it was. But I had a subscriber or viewer talk about which way does this screw go? So does it go in on the wider side or does it go in on the narrower side? And really, I thought I thought, I thought what I said was accurate, but what he, what this subscriber said made more sense, I guess. And the idea is that you put the screw through the narrower side where it's flatter so that the, um, the O-ring doesn't pop off or the shock doesn't pop off because it can't because it's wider on this side. It can't, it doesn't go through. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so we're gonna do it that way this time. So it's pretty simple. Put it in that exact point. You had the other shock. And then you just connect it down low. I should have I should have looked at the right height before I uh, installed this shock, but you know me, never have the patience to uh, do a before and after. And then we're just gonna connect uh, the wheel again. 
And so there is the first shock installed on the Ultra 4 chassis and just by uh, flexing it you can tell there's a lot more movement on this left side compared to the right side where there's pretty much nothing while over here you can kind of see some movement so looks like they're doing their job or one thing i have noticed is that it's a lot louder now with these telescope shocks as you can hear so this is another side comparison so look at that so look at the more flex on the right side of the vehicle so it's definitely doing something so now i'm going to do it on the other three corners of the vehicle and we'll get you guys updated so we look at all that flex on this side of the truck with those um, telescoping shocks so um you can really tell there's a big difference on this side compared to this side with the stock shocks not even like, holding it weird or anything that's just how it's moving but uh, I did want to know how it was really needed back here, these telescoping shocks, because there wasn't much movement because it's recommended that you have double links back here and my C10 links were just too short. So it was really restricting the movement in the rear. So I'm kind of glad we went with these telescoping shocks. And so totally tell it's definitely making a difference just alone here in the rear. So uh, got two more to go and then uh, we'll get this baby running. So everything is now installed. That was probably about five minute job. It was pretty simple, pretty standard stuff. But uh, I wanted to point out that now there's insane amount of droop on this thing like there was never before. I don't know if that's good or bad. We will definitely see tomorrow when we go out crawling. But I did want to note that before I installed these shocks, I couldn't even put my finger in this little gap right here because everything is so tight and now I can definitely put two fingers in here. So that's definitely an improvement on the travel of the suspension. And then back here in the rear, I don't know if that's too much because I have the MoFo flex blades here and I have the telescope and shocks. So it's definitely gonna be uh, figured out sooner or later because the whole point of this build is to have a low gravity, low CG. And now we're kind of just raising everything again. So, I mean, it's definitely bouncy now. So, uh, Wish me luck because this is pretty expensive and then maybe if uh, it doesn't work out, I can use these shocks for a different build, of course. So yeah, look at that. That's, that's pretty insane if you ask me. Oh, well, I could never be able to do that before. But hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for following along. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.